maybe a bit soggy, but that certainly hasn't deterred this fan base. A great crowd on hand to battle the raindrops at Nissan Stadium in Nashville. Today, we've got a matchup here in Pivotal Week 7 between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Tennessee Titans. Getting toward the halfway point of the NFL season, Week 7 is underway on EA Sports. Now Jamal Agnew from his end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. They'll start on the ground, ETN, and he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. That's a pickup of 11 and a first down on their first offensive play. That's pretty much mean potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at them and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all, challenging that defense on uh, that go-around. The offense won the challenge. On first down, right back to ETN. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave him seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they can let a tackler throw. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. On second and 11 now, Lawrence. This one complete to Christian Kirk. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Lawrence finding Kirk there for the Jaguar first. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. They'll yeah, work his way up the middle for a gain of about four, second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and getting their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. From the 44, Lawrence toward the sideline. And look at that catch. Dragging the toes. And that's going to be a first down. Well done. A good pick up there of 20 yards. But I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. On play action, Lawrence. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Lawrence. He'll complete this to Ingram as tight end. And he'll be brought down at the 27. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-get situation. Got out to the tight end. Now gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. And this will be play number eight of the opening drive. It's third and short. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And he will not only not get the yard he needed, he goes the wrong direction. Now to try the field goal, here's Daniel Carlson. This one from 48 yards away. The kick by Carlson is good. And the Jaguars grab a 3-0 lead. Well, they started the drive backed up pretty deep, but a nice effort to overcome the field position, get into field goal range on the game's opening possession. And Brandon, I think from where they started, the initial thought was, can we get one or two first downs and help out our defense after we pump the ball away with field position? But as that drive went on, I think their sights got set a little bit higher. They were thinking touchdown, end up settling in between and coming away with a field goal. 
And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. First and ten now, Willis and the Titans at their own 21. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry until about the 23. Well, this defense for the Jags, they really played well a week ago in that win over the Jets. And I think our statistician, we ended up having to bring the blue tent and put it around him for a while because he was developing a hand injury from having to write down all the turnovers this team forced. Five, six, seven, eight. Absolutely unbelievable. I hope he'll recover. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Second down, here's Willis. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. That's a first down pickup for Tennessee on a gain of 10. The Titans at one and five, really struggling here to start the year. And they come in in the midst of a pretty bad stretch here. Losers of five straight. And far be it from me to go ahead and go gloom and doom, right? If they fall down seven and nothing, 14 and nothing, all of a sudden, the cycle starts all over again. So the best way out of this for them, they need something to happen positive early in this game. That's a great way to help break this losing skid. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them. And a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. That's what we're used to seeing from him right there. Plays like that, why he's number four in the league in terms of receiving yardage. Able to make adjustments all along the way. Doesn't matter where he lines up, where he releases from. Working his way into the secondary, figures out defenses and finds weak spots in order to get open. Play fake. Here's Willis. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Jalen Ramsey. And the Jaguars are going to take over once again at their own 37 yard line. CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted, on the job training. So he's got to take this feedback that he's getting, negative or otherwise, and turn it into positives moving forward. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. That felt like a trap because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carrier before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Now Lawrence. Looking middle, and that's complete. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. And they'll throw on first down with Lawrence. He'll get this one complete to Zay Jones. And they're going to get this down near the 35-yard line. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful? You're losing play against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone. Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping the second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. And he 
takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Travis Etienne, his fifth rushing touchdown now on the year. And they are able to add on to their advantage. The point after through the raindrops, something good. And the lead grows to 10 0. So an early 10 0 lead for them now as they kick it away. And we'll see a return here from the end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Tennessee offense about set and ready to go. And they're in an early hole. The first drive, they threw the interception. That led to a touchdown. So, decent-sized deficit early on. It is, but I think you hit the key words, early on. So, they have to decide, do we even need to change game plan? Or do we just need to execute better and try and get back in this game? And this is what you've got to do against a quarterback like him. You've got to keep him in the pocket and not let him get to the perimeter. Because once he gets outside... That's where he can really hurt you. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. And now the throw here is incomplete. And with that, we come to the end of the first quarter of play. 10-0 to score after one on EA Sports. on that last play and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Willis, third and long. And he goes down. It's a sack. They get him back at his own three-yard line. Jermaine Johnson with a big-time sack on third down. It's a loss of seven. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now. And no room for air here as his first punt comes from deep in his own end zone. This will be a 41-yard punt, three on the return. And this offense will take over right at the midfield strike with a first and ten. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up, first and ten, right at the 50-yard line. They go play action now. Lawrence, he'll buy some time right. Now he's going to throw deep right side. He's got a man complete. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. A big pickup of 38. There's no doubt in my mind that not many guys in this league have had the impact that he's had here in the first half of the season. He's been a big play guy from the word go and continues to be one with another one right there. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Looking for the out route here, and it's completed to Kirk. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. On second down, a run with ETN. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. And no more. Call him, don't gain that 
time as it's going to leave it with a third and about three to go. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Lawrence on third down. He'll find ETN out of the backfield. So that'll be no better than an incompletion. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards? Especially on third down. Yeah, that one. How about the defense? Figured that one out in a big way. Yeah, they completed it all right and lost yardage. The kick by Carlson is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So three points there, and they continue to build this first-half lead. Yeah, every little bit helps, and the more that you can put together drives and start controlling the tempo, controlling possession, finishing with points, the better off you're going to be. And this is going to be returned from the middle of the end zone. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. And this not an easy situation. You're down early in the elements. You're on the road. How do you get the mojo back? Well, one thing is to remember that as an offensive player, you have a much better idea of what you're trying to accomplish and where you're trying to go than the defender. So in this case, because you know it, you can make your cuts with a little more decisiveness, maybe a second fake, some double moves, things of that nature, to go ahead and try and put some pressure on the defense. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. First and 10, Willis. It won't be a sack, but it's no gain, and it brings up second down. Well, I could spin this negatively as he just got back to the line of scrimmage, but when you really analyze it, he took away a big play for the defense, made it an uneventful run because he avoided a sack and didn't lose yardage. yardage brought down at the 32 it'll go as a loss of a yard so now they deal with third and 11 well that's the big drawback to this play even if somehow the quarterback pitches it he's not immune to the big hit in this case he kept it and absorbed it anyway on third down it's willis complete it's henry Shreds him with a stiff arm. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. Tennessee getting the first down on a big play of 18 yards. Well, he was a busy man out of the backfield a week ago. They got the ball early and often. I have no doubt in my mind that he'll be a big part of the game plan here as well. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Eluding the pressure right. And he just gets rid of it, throws it away. The wise move there looked like nobody open. Now second down. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now for getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Throwing again on second and ten, it's Willis. Got a man over the middle, and it's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 27-yard line. 23 yards to pick up there. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play Never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field, and here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. A first down carry for Henry. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. Nice job there on the tackle, keep him to the short gain. And, of course, he got some good news this week. He was named AFC Defensive Player of the Week from last week's effort. And part of the reason he got that award 
because of plays like that. Not every play is spectacular. Not every play is for a loss. Make the plays that are in front of you, keep it to short gains, and you pile up statistics. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. To throw, here's Willis. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Jermaine Johnson. That is now two sacks for him here in this first half. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? That's three sacks now, and this team came into the game in the bottom five in the league in sacks. Yeah, this What's is going not, on? It's not been their bread and butter. I don't know. Is a blind squirrel finding a nut, or is this something they can build on? Well, they found some momentum. They found a crack in that offensive line, and they're putting it to good use. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Micah Hyde. And the Jags are going to have the football here at their own 18-yard line. But really not much secret there. Third and long, Charles, and he was looking to throw the football. And I would imagine as a defender, you're kind of salivating in that spot, right? You certainly are because third and long situations, they tip the scale towards the defense every single time. Now you're actually able to dictate and understand what the offense is trying to do. You know where the first down marker is? You set your defense that way. And maybe you can be a little more aggressive in certain situations because of that. You start focusing on your coverage assignment, and when the ball's released, you break on it and make a play, as we just saw there. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Now Lawrence to throw. That's caught on the left side by Kirk. And he almost gets this to the 30, taken down about a yard shy. and 10 it's Lawrence that's complete to Travis Etienne out of the backfield and he'll lose yardage here going down back at the 28 he was unable to shake free there and they'll cover him for a loss of a yard second and 11 it's a throw again is Lawrence and this one taken in on the right sideline but not in the field of play they say it's incomplete the throw led him a little too far and brings up third down. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. On third down, Lawrence. And the Titan defense steps up here and down he goes. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. He was called on three times in the win last week as his first one here's away. Fielded at the 33. It's a 42-yard punt, but eight on the return, and it'll be Titan football. Tennessee offense about set and ready to go. As the offense comes out here, Charles, remember they threw the interception last time out, but they were moving the football down the field. Looked like they were going to have a sustained drive that ended in points, but then the pick ensued. And because of that, there's no way you can call the last drive a success. Yes, there are things to build on because they found some play calls that work. Now they've got to build another drive and find a way to avoid the turnover the plague did on the last one. They set up the screen for Henry. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. Second down and three. Second down, Willis looks to throw here. 
us here as he's taken down. Multiple defenders getting to him there for a huge loss. Now the offense will burn their third and final timeout. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Tough spot for Willis and the Titans, now facing third and long following the sack. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Going right side here, and that's complete. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. A real letdown defensively. That was third and a bundle, but they allow the conversion. Let's go now. First and ten, it's Willis. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Jermaine Johnson able to get in there yet again. That's already three sacks for him here in this first half of football. So we've reached the intermission of what right now is a 13-point game. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Welcome back. Charles and I settled into the booth ready for quarter number three. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. And here comes a return from a few steps into the end zone. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. and They've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. The opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. And it's still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the hey! huddle and run off a bunch more plays. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. This will go to Henry out wide. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one good for a pickup of 15 for Tennessee. But they certainly had success throughout this contest getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. Well, this will look to throw on first down. And able to find Alan Lazard. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They looked like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that they're very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. To the 36-yard line, stop there. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Okay, the ready? last run got three. Now here's second and seven. 19, 19, 19. Again, it's Henry. 
And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. Oftentimes we praise an offense for their variety of being able to hit people with a run in the pass. But in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable unit, but you're right. It might go to them in this game. I like that. MVU. Well done. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. Now Willis on third down. Open man is Michael Thomas. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 15-yard line. 17 yards on that play for the Titans. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. The goal is certainly to try and make a big play happen and climb back into this game, but you have to be careful. If you overdo it, you could turn it over and hurt your team. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Second down throw coming by Willis. Flush to his right. And he just chucked that one out of bounds, out of everyone's reach. Maybe a wise call not to take a sack in this part of the field. It brings up third down. His impatience has to be bubbling over, trying to find a way to get his team to the end zone for the first time. He did find a way to break contain and get outside to buy his receivers a little extra time, but the connection couldn't be made on that throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he's able to get this down to the five-yard line before he's out of bounds. So the completion results there in nine yards. And it'll be fourth down. A short game that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. 18 Rattler, 18 Rattler. Fourth down, Willis. Oh, hit as he throws, and this is going to be incomplete. The Titans try it, but ultimately they fail on fourth down. And that will force a turnover on downs. So they finally get their first trip to the red zone, and it ends with nothing. And that's what I'm going to focus on with you, because you teed it up really well. Finally get to the red zone. So it's got to be a little bit of frustration, because they haven't moved the ball as well as they wanted to all game. And it's a fumble. And he's got his guys set up great now. First and goal, and the picks get at the seven-yard line. Well, that's sure start. And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Throwing on second and eight. Lawrence looking left side, and he's got a man. That's right. First target, first catch, and a first down. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Meanwhile, Lawrence's throw into the hands of Kirk. So the completion good for seven there, and it's second down. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag routes are pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. ETN up the middle. And this will be a Jaguars first down as he's got this up to about the 34-yard line. First downs have not come easy, and neither have runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. And he finally felt like, oh, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. Lawrence with a quick throw outside. That's complete. They'll give him four yards there, and that's going to bring up second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. 
Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Continuing to steadily move the ball down the field. Not big play after big play, but these moderate gains getting him first downs. And you know what they add up to, right? If you continue that pace and you continue to move it downfield, they add up into six points. That's exactly what you're looking for. Lawrence going to get this to ETN. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Lawrence with a completion to Kirk. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 34-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Lawrence will throw. Touchdown! A great effort there. His fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Jaguars are able to extend their lead in the final seconds of this third quarter. Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more, right? Maybe they get the first score. That doesn't happen. It looks almost insurmountable, but it's not. Let's see how hard they play the rest of the game. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And that pushes the lead up to an even 20. Following the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Carlson. And here comes a return from the middle of the end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked out officially at the 21. Tennessee offense about set and ready to go. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, Willis throws another interception, his third of the game. Picked off by Micah Hyde, and he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Well, I mean, you get it. They're trying to make something happen here in this third quarter, CD, but I don't think a pick six is exactly what they had in mind. No, not at all, because this offense, they've been stuck all game long. Haven't dented the scoreboard yet, and they're kind of forced to take a few chances here, and that one, it backfired in a big way. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And that stretches the lead all the way up to 27. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. They'll elect to bring it out here from the end zone. And he'll be out of bounds here just past the 20-yard line. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. Well, we haven't exactly been treated to a nail biter in this one, CD. And if they cannot score here, this one's pretty much all but over. Are you saying that you feel like people are starting to think about getting out of here, maybe beating the traffic in order to get home or to their final destination? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to hang around, especially if they can't score here. Yeah, you're right about that because it has been pretty clear who the better team has been in this one. And in a league that we talk about every game being a one-score game as we go into it, watching this blowout, it's, let's just say it's been unusual. They go play action with Willis. And that'll fall incomplete. He was hit just as he let that go. And now it's third down. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. This offense so far on third down, they've hit four of seven. This time they face a third and two. 
And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 14 yards that time, and a first down on the keeper. How about that there? No frills, no additives, right? Nothing crazy. Just find a way to pick up the first down. A nice run right there. On first down, Willis. And this is going to fall to the ground incomplete. That very nearly their fourth pick of the game. Instead, second down. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Now a throw here to his running back. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Can you do any more work or make it more dramatic for not much gain than what we just saw there? Did you see how his toes got down? Tip-tap, tip-tap, got him down. But what did he get out of it? He sold the sizzle. He just had no stake. <laughs> I mean, was it one yard? Yeah, you, plays like that, you at least expect a first down there, just oh, one yard. Me. On third down, it's Willis. complete to trailing Burks and he's going to have another first down as the tackles made at the Jaguars 40. It'll be a gain of 16 for number 16. Well this game was decided a while ago and that completion there it's going to artificially inflate his passing numbers so right now the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. He's going to fire one deep over the middle. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked up by Andre Sisko. Boy, so another interception, CD. And it feels like he's starting to unravel a little bit. And as you would expect, still a work in progress here in his second season. He has to start ironing out some of these mistakes, though, because now his head coach, his offensive coaches, they have to evaluate whether you keep playing him and let him work through it or you start thinking about going to his backup. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. I know you're trying to wring every yard out of a run, but I think nine yards there is ideal in this situation. Yeah, now next couple plays, you only need one yard. Keep that clock rolling with a lead here in the fourth. Yeah, what you're saying is maybe if it takes you one or two more runs to get the first down, that's extra time, extra plays. Really hurts the team on defense. 58 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. Another example of this offense really having their way, Charles, and another big chunk play there on the ground. And when you look at the defense, they've got to do a much better job of wrapping up when they tackle. A lot of great opportunities continue to slip through their fingers, as do the runners. Lawrence going to fire it out wide, complete. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. Heck of a play there to get to him quickly and get him down for a loss. I think they did a really nice job getting ready for this game, scouting, watching film, and understanding defensively what the play design was. Running out of the gun with ETN. And he's across the 43 extra yards to the 43. They get nine yards back on the run there. They're left with a much more makeable third and two. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Just a gain of a couple, but good enough to keep the drive rolling. But sometimes, Brandon, it's just not a secret to how things get done. He's been running well all game long, and they continue to rely on him in this key situation. They told us they were going to rely on him. They have. He comes through there, a big third down conversion. And a solid run here as he'll pick his way down to the 42-yard line. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, 
keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. 11 more on that one, and another first down. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. Another toe for ETN. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. They got to get it to the 21 here on third down. A shotgun snap and a give to ETN. And a hard working run here as he's got it inside the 20, down to the 17. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. And they will take a knee here. seconds as they take the knee. A dime look defensively here for the Titans on third. So this will be a win for Jacksonville. And this was truly a total team effort, Charles, on both sides of the ball. But they absolutely pitched a shutout, so it can't get much better than that, right? The defense led the way, but the offense did their part as well. They moved the ball up and down the field. So you've got to like what you saw. What do they call that, a total team effort? I think when it's time to hand out game balls, guys from both sides will end up getting one. So for Jacksonville, the win moves him up to 5-2 and two now on the year. And they'll have another road date next week with the Indianapolis Colts. Meanwhile, for Tennessee, things are definitely going south quickly as they fall now to 1-6. and six. And they'll look to regroup next week as they head to Houston to take on the Texans.